Hello, hello, my name is Cody and welcome to my capstone project. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my experiences of drawing and what I've learned from it throughout the past year. So I guess it all starts in late February 2021 when I decided to get a graphics tablet since I've always wanted one. So a hobby that I've had for quite a while now is that I would create these distorted slash cursed meme edits, which on the internet are commonly known as the dreaded first edit. So essentially before doing digital art, I was a cursed editor or a poop poster if you will because obviously i can't say that word there are two main procedures that are included in the life cycle of a cursed edit the first step obviously is to create said cursed edit and the second step is that you would send it to all your group chats your text chats your discord servers your cat your social media etc because the best thing you can hope for is that your meme gets shared and spread by reposting okay maybe i should have explained what a cursed edit actually is because people might be lost here so essentially meme slash distorted or cursed edits are images that consist of edited characters or objects which are distorted to the point in which they become disturbing. So pretty much you just grab an image, put it into Photoshop, apply a bunch of filters and overall just mess with it. These edits are amusing not only because of the extreme level of distortion but because of how traumatized the recipients would be upon viewing them. And I do this because funny. We do a little trolling, it's called we do a little trolling. The usual process for me at least would begin with taking someone's anime wife or pretty much anything that people like and then cursing them. I guess just imagine if someone took your favorite idol or a family member or actually you and then photoshopped them bald. Not to brag or anything but I managed to achieve pretty incredible feats such as changing the meme meta in the Arknights community as well as being blocked by probably half the entire discord server. Arknights is just a mobile strategy anime RPG tower defense game that I've been playing for a pretty long time now. I think about two years? It's also where I can get a little bit of inspiration. Anyways, yeah, it's just a community full of degenerates I've been in for a while now, and it's where I lose my excess brain cells. <coughs> As I was saying, I even have entire folders of subgenres for the so-called cursed edits. Here's one, the Blitz Smile edits, a major one that a few of the other memers also caught on to and started producing their own Blitz Smile edits. The story with the Blitz Smile edits is that Arknights had a collab with the popular game Rainbow Six Siege, and Blitz is from Rainbow Six Siege, and someone happened to put his face into FaceApp and made him have this funny smile. And I would just cut out his face and photoshop it onto anything ranging from a beach building thing to a human rat. The next day someone sent me this email and I was like, hey? And then I realized I'm not very smart because I leaked my email by sharing the drive link. Anyways, my program of choice for these cursed edits back in the day was GIMP. GIMP is basically a free to play version of Photoshop but it also has its advantages and is better in some departments. Highly recommended. By the way, you can get a grasp on how to use GIMP pretty easily and memify anything at will. It's a funny skill to just have and it's easier to obtain than most people think. Most, if not all, Photoshop apps are very similar, so you learn it once and you learn them all. One day, I just thought to myself, instead of taking other people's art and cursing it, what if I just made my own art? And that is when I transitioned to a program specifically designed for drawing, known as Clip Studio Paint. I still remember the very first thing that I drew, so around late February when my drawing tablet finally arrived, I was in a voice chat with my friends and trying out the thing. And then when I was sketching on a PK rat, they started yelling at me. Why on earth would you buy that overpriced piece of garbage and not a PS4? But wait, what the hell is a PK right you might ask? Well, it's this. Well, it's our friend, our, our very, <coughs> very good friend, as a rat. One time my friend Hedgehog was asking me why I would rather buy that piece no! of garbage than play with my friends on the PS4. Knowing that his sister was also an artist who had a graphics tablet, I went to him. Ask your sister how much hers cost. And fortunately for Hedgehog, he had now learned how much these things actually cost. He was pretty shocked at first and even more so after I'd informed him that our graphics tablets were actually only entry level. And now that I had successfully dodged the question, I proceeded to laugh at Hedgehog. <laughs> Here are some earlier pieces of art that I saved from back at the time. Yes, they are really bad and incredibly embarrassing, but you probably have to start somewhere. Well, that's my backstory and explanation out of the way. Now I should share some strategies and ideas that I have learned and came up with during my drawing career. Quick disclaimer, this is not some sort of drawing tips tutorial, it's just some things that work for me. And teaching people how to do things is probably the worst thing possible for me because I troll way too much. 
Number one, don't force yourself to draw. It's like school. I like math, maybe, but not when it's being shoved down my throat literally every single day, even when I don't want to do it. Just draw when you want to and take breaks because when you burn out or do something way too much, you just get tired of doing it and begin to hate it. I actually feel like I have more ideas and often think I do way better when I come back from a break. Sometimes you might feel completely helpless and unmotivated to draw, which is totally natural. For me, that's just my cue to do something else. Number two, just like anything else, it's a good idea to have friends who are also interested in the same thing. You can learn from them, discuss, and share new ideas because that's what humans are built to do. I honestly appreciate the amount of positivity and inspiration that goes around in groups like these. I think it goes a pretty long way even when you don't realize it. Number 3. For me, I drew an anime, but even in a genre, I realize everyone's work has clear and distinct differences. But don't worry about having your own sub-style type of thing because it's something that will naturally come over time. Probably the most important one. Look at references. Whether it be from a game, a tutorial video, or an image search, it really doesn't matter. References are important, especially if you're drawing in a certain genre or just starting out. You need to understand some rules that follow the style, but either way, just use references. And even the best artists use them. Drawing something that you've never drawn before or drawing hands or poses without references is basically hell on earth. Also, something to know is that depending on the style, it's less of what makes sense but what you think looks good. For example, in anime, just like cartoons, a lot of things obviously do not make sense. And probably the most notable thing is how shading works. Number five, Five. Some things that I realized is that strokes have meaning to them. By this I mean straight and parallel lines with sharp corners are used to represent structure, order, calculation, and toughness, while curved lines represent freedom, nature, familiarity, and beauty. Number 6. It doesn't matter if you're slow or bad. If people like it, it will sell lol. But something my friend Earth told me. I was minding my own business whilst in the group voice chat and probably playing Minecraft or something. The conversation happened to make its way to me and they were talking about I probably make bank off of drawing which would mean that I take commissions and I was like bro no, I'm not good enough for that. But anyways, the idea here is that if people like your work, then it doesn't matter if you think you're bad. Good is subjective and not everyone likes the same thing. I actually had quite a few people who asked if I take commissions even though I don't think I'm remotely good. Yet. Number 7. A really good tip that I learned from one of the homies in the drawing communities is look back at your work from before. I did it and I was like, man, look at that garbage that I drew before. I really like this strategy because it shows you how much you've actually progressed and it also makes you feel good. Drawing was a wonderful way to help me waste free time and relieve some stress, especially when we were still being cooped up in our homes because of that dumb thing known as COVID-17 or whatever. I gotta admit though, getting used to drawing on a graphics tablet was pretty hard and the ironic thing is that there's this same the better you are on paper, the harder it is to grasp digital. And it's actually pretty true as far as I know, and there seem to be sources to confirm that. At some point I found that I'm still better drawing on paper, or at least more comfortable and faster, even though I had absolutely no experience drawing whatsoever. I guess the two platforms seem like they're the same animal, but they're a completely different beast. It's like playing soccer and then expecting to be good at Rocket League, when in reality you usually only get to choose one. You either look like this, or you actually go outside and touch grass. Overall, I guess you can't really judge how easy something is because learning to draw depends on the person and judgment on individual drawings is subjective. Also I think difficulty is not really an important thing and it depends more on if you want to do it or not and how much time you're willing to spend. Probably more about time and motivation than difficulty but it's pretty cool though because you can still be learning new things even after a decade of practice. Obviously just like most things getting into it is still the hardest part but it's still a worthwhile skill to just pick up even if you aren't going into a career that demands it. Also some people will be able to do things for a longer period of time, kind of like having a maximum amount of patience I guess, and for others it takes longer to learn something, and maybe some people just don't have the time. For me personally it's probably not fair because that the last three generations of my family does consist of actual artists, so there's that. I've got absolutely no regrets putting a little time into it and probably will continue to do so in the future. At least in the end it will be more useful than playing video games all day. Also even during these days I still continue to create the cursed edits from time to time, although my products only consist of these more basic composition distortions rather than the crazy manipulated stuff with the filters because I don't even have GIMP installed these days mostly because I'm too broke to afford more disk space but that's about it for me things are sticking till the end of the video as it was interesting and fun experience bringing it together and I hoped you liked it because I actually worked my butt off see ya